Welcome to the Share Chair Podcast, where we tell each other's stories and learn from listening. Mr. Start. Um, also Coach Start. Also yeah. Coach yeah. Start. Also, so like new coach start, new teacher of social studies, history, yep. um, n- new to the sit, new to the community. Yeah. All this new. Mm-hmm. How, right. how is it going? Good. It's actually going really well. Okay. I mean, it's, it's one of those things where, I mean, I'm new to it, but I've, I've been doing it. Okay. You know, I mean, you know, I've been coaching for a long time and I've been teaching for a while. And so yeah. it, those aspects aren't new. Like first period, yeah. it was good to get in your element, you know, and to yeah. just kind of do your thing. Yeah, you that's know? great. So you're from somewhere in Florida, most directly, right? Well, I'm from Granville. I was born and raised in Granville. Okay. Um, graduated from Granville High School, went to Grand Valley State. Uh-huh. Um, so I'm from the area. Okay. Um, you know, there's no doubt about that. And then, yeah, just got a teaching job in South Florida. It was one of those things where I graduated from Grand Valley and it was, you know, how teaching jobs are. Yeah. You know, um, I, I was a finalist for two jobs yeah. and both of time, both times they said, we want to hire you, but you don't have any teaching experience. And I said, how do I get teaching I need experience? To get some. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like the chicken or the egg, yeah. you know, yeah. I don't know. So it was frustrating, you know, cause it got down to the wire. And so I was all set up to student teach and to continue working my other job and um, coaching still. And yeah. then, you know, Geez, this was August. This was late August. Just randomly applied to a job online, mm-hmm. you know, thinking nothing's gonna come of it, but you gotta try anyway. Yeah. And um, yeah, and then they they called me within, you know, an hour or two of applying, and they're like, we'll get you, we'll get you to talk to the principal and all that. The principal called me the next day, hired me over the phone, and I was in South Florida within a week. Yeah, wow. that's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was it was a whirlwind. So were you coaching there as well? Yeah, I was coaching in South Florida. In yep. South Florida. Yep, well. I was uh, at Boyd Beach High School. Yeah. Um, for six years, and then I was at Jupiter High School for two. Yeah, great. So Great. And how about, uh, you know, like philosophy of coaching, philosophy of the classroom or of, I mean, like what what are you um, trying to bring to the classroom or the team this year at Spring Lake? I mean, what, what, how do you kind of? Well, for, for athletics, you know, we're, we're building. You know, mm-hmm. we're, we're trying to, to, you know, build on toughness, build on grit, you know, we're kind of changing our offense and defensive philosophies to a more physical style of football. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we're trying to suit what we do to our kids. Um, mm-hmm. I think, you know, we do that in the classroom too. You know, you try to figure out what kids can do and then you kind of tailor what you do towards them. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's what we're doing, you know, offensively, defensively, you know, we're uh, building through the weight room. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we got the beautiful new weight room down there mm-hmm. that they built. Um, and, you know, this summer we used it every single day. We averaged 40, 45 kids in there every day. Wow. Um, so we're moving in the right direction. Yeah. Um, it's For just, sure. It's one of those things that just takes time. You know, it's, it's not going to happen overnight, especially when you're talking about the weight room. It's hard to get kids to buy in with the Have It Now Society where, you know, if I need to know an answer, I Google it and I have it in two seconds instead of going and finding a book and looking it up. Yeah. The, the weight room's the same way. You know, they want to come in and I want to bench 245. Well... It's going to take some time, <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, you're working out with, you know, you're having a hard time with 135. It's going to take a year or two, you know, and it's yeah. hard to see those long range goals. goals. Yeah. So we try to keep them motivated. You know, we have, we're getting a, a record board put up there and we got t-shirts and different clubs and, you know, all that kind of stuff to keep them motivated. So yeah. um, we have like this whole philosophy of Lakerland and Mr. Mo has this, you know, ideology of once a Laker, always a Laker. So mm-hmm. what are you pers- individually going to bring do that well, in a way of life. We have our, um, you know, for football, for the football program, our whole motto is one crew. Mm-hmm. You know, we're, we're all together. We're, we're one program. You know, really, the JVs and varsity, we all practice as one team. Mm-hmm. So we're not separated. We're all in it together. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and we, we build that mindset of you got to depend on each other. You got to depend on your teammates. And, you know, and, and you kind of, you take care of one another. You know, when people are struggling, when people are down, you, you pick them up. You help support them because... Again, we're all in it together, and we need everyone to be successful. Yeah. So I'm really curious about that philosophy, that mentality. So do you mind digging into that a little bit more? Like what does – how does it benefit? Like what have you seen from that mentality of one crew? How does that better the individual, the group? The games. like The games. The, the, because, because I think that message is sort of the philosophy of even this podcast. If we can – 
yeah, understand each other will be better. But yeah, how, do you, do you see that? Yeah, we see we've seen a big change. You know, it was it was tough for the kids to understand. You know, at first too. You know, when we were practicing all together, you know, we had like you know our varsity wears red and our JVs wear gold jerseys. And, you know, our gold JVs were on offense. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I said, okay, well, the Reds get on defense and give us a look and that sort of thing. And it proceeded to look like D-Day. I mean, it was carnage. <laughs> you know, the seniors were throwing sophomores around. It was it was bad. Yeah. Um, and we cut that off pretty quick. And, you know, the JVs went and got water. And we had a, a very interesting and uh, colorful conversation mm -hmm. with the, the seniors, you uh -huh. know, and the juniors. But, you know, their mindset has to change of, you know, we're bigger, so we'll beat up on the younger kids. And instead... And it has is they're helping them out every day at practice. You know the, you know when we're on offense, you know they're helping out the defensive linemen. Hey, you're supposed to go here. The linemen are helping one another out. You know the the backs are helping each other out. Um, and so it's had a huge impact on our program. You know where the younger kids are getting better leaps and bounds because first of all they feel like they're a part of it. Uh -huh. You know they don't feel like they're isolated. They don't feel like they're somewhere else you know they they're a part of of the program and they get to be around these juniors and seniors that they kind of look up to and they've seen play and you know that they're 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 all bought in yeah. you know and the other nice thing that it does is it allows our coaches to really specialize and, and work with individual groups I mean the sophomore running backs and quarterbacks they work with me every day yeah. you know and that doesn't really happen at other schools where the JV teams are working with the head varsity coach every single day yeah mm -hmm. um, and that has a big impact they're working with the the varsity offensive line coach every single day and you know you're getting the best coaching for the kids every day so it's been been very beneficial that difference between we're gonna take advantage of these kids and throw them around to wait a second we can help them by coaching them up too from our own perspective yeah what a huge change I mean that's going to make the individuals better and then when the individuals get better the whole right the whole team gets better well and that's something that we discussed too because you know those seniors you know next year when they're walking around the community with the SL on their chest who's representing them mm -hmm. it's those kids that they helped mm -hmm. the year before and the two years before and you know, trying to carry on that tradition and trying to, to build kind of a community mm -hmm. um, around that idea. It's, you know, it, the kids are really buying into it and understanding yeah. it. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. So a tough first two games, uh, but with the rest of the season, what are you looking for as gains for your team and, you know? That Just to continue to grow. I mean, you know, everyone looks at the scoreboard, wins and losses and points. You know, we've only lost, we lost two games by a combined two points. Yeah. So it's not I like, know. Yeah, that's and we had, you know, you know, you look at the first game, we had that in hand 27 nothing mm -hmm. halfway yeah. through the third quarter. Yeah. Um, you look at the last game, and we just we gave them short fields, and they scored on a 10-yard drive and a 35-yard drive. Yeah. Other than that, they didn't do anything. Yeah. You know, and we just continually shoot ourselves in the foot. And, and you know, that's one of those things where we just kind of develop over, I guess, the course of, of the, the time. I mean, I know we're moving in the right direction, and I see the improvements. Um, maybe, you know, the casual fan doesn't, but I can see us growing and changing. Yeah. So we, we're just continuing to grow, and we'll see how things go. And then measure that growth in different ways, too. Like, right. you, like you say, like recognizing how we're functioning in practice and how we're doing all that. That's right, cool. yeah, because, you know, especially the first year, you know, we're looking at laying the foundation for a program for a 10-, 15-year stretch. You know, yeah. So as much as we want to win right now and I'm as competitive as the next person, yeah. um, you know, it eats me up when we lose, especially tight games. But – you know, I can see the growth of the program, and it's it's moving in the right direction. I watch football games all the time, and you'll see, you know, kids getting really worked up and really upset about a certain play that they made. And I know when I was in volleyball and playing sports way back when, my coach would tell me, you know, look at the next play. You don't focus on right now. You focus on how are you going to earn that back. So what are you? What is your philosophy when you're talking to a kid who's really worked up about maybe it's a test that didn't go well, or maybe it's um, a play that went bad in the game, and they're throwing their helmet all over the place? What are you telling them? Well, hopefully they're not throwing their helmet because we're having a much, <laughs> much different conversation. Yeah. Um, but well, you know, one thing that we've talked about as a team since the very beginning is just we worry about today. You know, we don't worry about yesterday because you can't change the past. We don't worry about tomorrow because it's not promised. So we just worry about getting better, being better at the end of the day than we were at the beginning of the day. Um, we apply that to the football games as well. You know, each play, you know, worry about this play. You know, if you made a mistake, learn from it, move on. You can't change it. Mm -hmm. There's no sense in, in pulling yourself down. There's no sense looking at the next series or the next quarter. I mean, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? You just got to focus on doing your job for this play 
and then executing and, and then moving on. Yeah. Where did you learn that? Uh, just one of those things I've always been taught as a as a kid. I mean, growing up, I mean, it was just there's not much you can do, you know. I mean, you know, I I learned from a coach down in Florida. You know, one of his his things because as a young teacher and a young coach, first year coach, you know, I get all worked up mm -hmm. and you get all frustrated and. And, you know, he'd always come up and say, you know what, control the things you can control and the rest of the heck with it. You know, you, there's nothing you can do about it, so move on. There's nothing you can do about yesterday. It's done. Yeah. So you just got to move on. You got to keep pushing forward. Yeah. How about beyond the, uh, the football field? What do you love to do? I mean, what, who, who, you know, do you, are you, do you have a family? I do. Okay, yep. so who, who's in your family? What, yep. Yeah, um, I have a wife, Angela. Um, you know, we've been married for almost three years now. Yeah. Um, you know, and we, we met up here and moved down to Florida together and the whole mm -hmm. nine yards, and we've been together for, geez, combined nine or ten years. Okay. So it's been a while, yeah. um, to say the least. But, you know, that's one of those things where, you know, she's, she's kind of, you know, supported me, especially, you know, when it comes to coaching and stuff. It's so tough. Mm -hmm. um, and so she's been very supportive and, you know, couldn't do it without her. Awesome. Um, and then I have a daughter, Maisie. Um, she is four. She turns five in two weeks, um, and she actually just started school today. Today was her first school oh, day, so I'm yeah. excited to hear about that. The kindergarten. Pictures. Yep. Well, oh, she's in the young five. Oh, young she missed miss kindergarten by like eight days or whatever <laughs> okay. it is. So she's all excited. She gets to ride the bus and the yeah. whole nine yards, and oh, so I'm awesome. excited to hear about that. Yeah. Um, and then I have a son, Rhett, who's um, a little over a year. He's about 14 months. Um, so he's running all over the place mm -hmm. and causing terror, but he's a good kid. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, so. And other passions, other things you like to do? I mean, uh, football obviously must eat up a lot of your time, but when it's not that, I mean, what do you? Uh, when it's not that, just spending time with the kids. I mean, it's one of those things where, especially during football season, you know, I don't get home until 6, 6.30, which means I get about an hour with the kids. So the weekends, you know, spend with them, with the family, um, you know, Outside of that, you know, I'm an avid golfer, um, so my season is going to be over very quickly, pretty <laughs> soon, <laughs> yeah, um, well. due to weather. But uh -huh. you know, I like golfing quite a bit. I'm going to figure out something to do during the winter. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, but we'll see. You know. um, okay, oftentimes coaches will be a role model. You know, somebody to look up to and be a consistent part in your life. Have there been you know students or players that have worked under you that have really made an impact on your life? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, I when I think back to geez, some of the the toughest things was when I was at Boyd Beach High School because it's a Title One urban school. Mm -hmm. The kids come to school with literally nothing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and they look to you as you know a father, a mother, a coach, a teacher. I mean, you look, you name it. Mm -hmm. um, and so you get a lot of fulfillment with those kids because I mean, I still stay in contact with them, and you know, to see them have any kind of success is awesome, especially mm -hmm. you know considering the hand they've been dealt. Um, you know, play, whether it be playing football at the next level or whether it be moving on, you know, um, getting jobs, you know, graduating from college, that sort of thing. Those are the, the things that I like to see um, just because, you know, I know it's setting themselves up for a, a good life, which, you know, some of them really didn't have a great one, you know, coming out of it. So yeah, that's powerful. How do they affect you then as an educator or as a coach or, you know, how do you see things? Um, differently when you look at things from their own perspective. How does that change? How has that even transferred over to coming to Spring Lake where everybody is, mind my language, but white privilege, you know, it's, it's, we yeah, do or have, most, or most, yeah, or exactly, many. we do have, like, you know, underprivileged um, families here, but, I mean, the vast majority, do, they're doing just fine. You well, know? that's, yeah, yeah and that's kind of what, I, I mean, it was, it was a, a transition going to Jupiter because Jupiter, I mean, they yeah. call it Beverly Hills East, you know, because it's, yeah. that's the kind of community it is, yeah. you know, and a lot of, a lot of money, a lot of wealth, a lot of um, good, good family situations. But, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, they're still kids. They still need something, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, when you look at, you know, how those, those kids impacted me is that, you know, you see life, it's not, life is not black and white. Um, and I don't just mean that from, you know, a race color perspective, yeah. but just in general, you know, there's a lot of gray areas where, um, you know, kids are working hard, they're doing the best that they can. And, and you know, you got to try to help those kids as much as possible. Yeah. Um, and you look at, you know, even at a school like Jupiter, or like Spring Lake, there's still kids that are going to have needs. There's still kids that are, are going to need things. Um, you just got to figure out what those things are. So when you think about that, um, role of a coach or a teacher or, or a father, I mean, you know, a father too, um, what do you think of as the some of the most important core values? I mean, what are you trying to really impress upon your team, your students, as we kind of wrap up the 
Well, I, I think it's the hard work. I think it's the hard work and it's the, it's the perseverance type of thing because, you know, life is going to always give you setbacks. It's always going to give you problems. Um, there's always going to be tough situations. You know, I mean, I know over the last three, four years, I mean, there have been some tough situations for me where, you know, living in South Florida, wanting to get my family back to West Michigan, you know, job opportunities. I was in final interviews at one place, um, final interviews at another place, didn't get either of those jobs, and that's devastating. But, you know, what can you do about it? You just got to, you know, push on, move forward, continue doing what you're doing, and, and try to figure out the best situation for yourself. Um, so I think, you know, the, the hard work, the perseverance, I think, you know, if you have those things, you can have a lot of success in life. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Anything else to No, add? this was awesome. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Cool. Thank you for Thanks having so me. This much. was awesome. so great. Yeah, cool. We appreciate it very much. Yeah.